Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chillin', serial killin', five cold fillers on the line, got you reeling. five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling, if you catch a one star, no time for feelings, got a demon DJ, all the ones and twos, by the name of Sylvester, don't get confused, so grab a seat by the fire, roast them all the way to, and prepare to hear the legend of the straight chillin' crew. What up, nerds, and welcome back to another rousing episode of Straight Chilling. My name's Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is going to be episode number 182, recorded on Thursday, October 4th, 2018. Tonight, we're going to be reviewing a little movie called Ghost Stories. Before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., our remote graphic designer, Randy Gandy G. Landy. Hello there. How's it going? Very well, sir. And last but not least on the show, calling in from South Korea, Soju. You know who it is. It's your boy, Soju. What up? It's your boy. It's your boy. How how you feeling, big dog? Feeling real strong. Got that Soju power pumping through my veins. (laughs) Soju power, huh? Uh, Oh, (laughs) still. So you just haven't stopped drinking, I see. (laughs) That's the only way to not get hung over, right? You just keep drinking. Yeah, just oh, yeah. yeah. Keep you, you also drinking. never have to sleep. <laughs> That's right. That's what adults yeah. do, right? Drink through the pain. There you go. Keeps me strong. <laughs> you got five sojus and two beers in you, I heard. And then yeah, I got yeah. a multitude of uh pretty hilarious textual messages from you. I had the in real, the middle of my day. <laughs> I had I had the real Korean um like business situation the boss takes you out you gotta you know keep up with the drinking five Oops. bottles of soju and two ends with a glory later huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what i still posted our first <laughs> uh 31 days of halloween video so i got that 31 That's days true. of october yeah. originally in my drunken <laughs> state <laughs> <laughs> this month there's We're 31 gonna... days in october <laughs> days of october I, how many days of october in november again <laughs> there's only three of them in november oh, but shit. i quickly fixed so wicked segue <laughs> juice why don't you tell our listeners exactly what the 31 days of halloween are well i was gonna say that for our what you've been watching because that's literally what i've been watching so let's let's move on <laughs> okay never mind <laughs> Why don't you tell? We only uh, we only prepare privately. Never <laughs> ever explain things to each other in advance. What fun would that be? Why don't you uh, tell me how you want to run the show, uh, Juice? What what should we do? Huh? Why don't, why don't why don't you run it? You got it. Thought you'd never ask, Rob. First, <laughs> Finally, so I've been you. waiting. Oh boy! Now that I've got permission. <laughs> Your commish of the podcast now. So first, to kick things off, everyone, we got some <laughs> housekeeping issues to get through. Uh, next, <laughs> next Wednesday is our first ever live event. Next Jacksonville, Wednesday. Florida. That's, that's accurate. Oh, wow. We're gonna What's be happening? There. What's happening next Wednesday? We are hosting a live film at Sunray Cinema Film Viewing Return of the Living Dead. This is our first ever live event. You can come meet us. Randy has prepared some custom posters for the show. They'll be signed, of course. You can purchase them there. If there's any left after the show, you know, you can order them through us. Straight chilling. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll be watching that 7 p.m. Wednesday the 10th, Sunray Cinema. Return of the Living Dead. Back Great to you, Bob. Back to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now our field reporter Bob. Here it's I too am. much to keep. Too much to keep up with. I'm I'm more of a responder kind of a guy. Oh. Oh. Okay. He's more of a juice with sports. Oh. Than lead anchor juice. <laughs> juice with sports. Um. <laughs> so yeah, some more housekeeping is in order. Um. Uh, our our poll pick for October has closed and we have a winner a winner has emerged and i'm oh my not, god who, who are the losers who are the losers 
Um, yeah. I don't even remember the other fucking picks, honestly. I don't know. Hocus Pocus won. Well, that, <laughs> that's all Yay! that matters. That's the winner. Hey, Oz was in there. Oh, yeah. Return and, to yeah, Oz. Yeah, Return to Oz. Night of the Demons, right? Night of the Demons, yeah. Yeah, those are the losers. We'll never talk about those ever again now. Yeah, those those have been burned in the fire of history as far as this podcast is concerned, and we will never view them, and you will never hear a speaker ever again. Yep, they're gone. So That's how this works. Uh, next week I just decided that. That's, that's <laughs> Them's the rules all of a sudden. The reins of this cart get handed off real easily. <laughs> just taken, really. They, they're just taken. We're, um, so next week we're going to be talking about Hocus Pocus because that is our October poll pick. And that means we've got a November poll pick up and running. And that oh, means... shit. Pick of the mood. <laughs> Hell yeah. You got you to gotta rock the vote. That's what you got to do. You got to do it again. If you are... Yeah, uh, let's do... If you have to choose one thing to vote on this November, make it our poll pick. <laughs> That's <on> right. <laughs> make it Patreon. truly count. <laughs> May, you, you never know if it counts in the general but you know it counts for the straight chilling boys that's our guarantee yep every vote counted no collusion required no nope. <laughs> collusion light over here floridians can count i don't know sometimes i fix the numbers hocus oh. pocus one after all oh you son of a bitch <laughs> uh, did putin make you do that or what <laughs> Dude, putting my butthole out. Root and toot <laughs> Okay, this has gone way off the rails now, and I blame myself. Let's move forward. Yep, Randy. See, I told you I'm Holy more of a responder shit. kind of a guy. Holy shit. So, November poll pick is going to be up on the Patreon. If you're a Patreon subscriber, that means you can vote for a movie that we're going to be talking about come November. Uh, you'll have the entire month of October to vote on this. The three movies that you're going to have to choose from are as follows. Oh, well, first up, I guess I should probably say what the topic was. So we chose the word feast for November. Chose three movies um, that correlate to the word feast in one way or another because, obviously, we're going to be feasting come Thanksgiving. So you got three movies to pick from. Uh, first, you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Second, you got Motel Hell. Third, you got Beetlejuice. All right. Hell yeah. Feast movies. Feast. Feast your eyes and your ears and your buttholes. Did, did, <laughs> All right. Please. <laughs> please let's not feast our buttholes today. Let's move forward amicably. Tomorrow's no agreement. No agreement. Maybe tomorrow we can. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's it for the housekeeping. Let's go ahead and talk about what we've been watching this week, there, gentlemen. Hey gang, what you been watching? Hey Randy, what you been watching? Well, let's see. This week I've been watching a cartoon show program by the name of Hilda on Netflix. It's a kid's show, but I was enjoying it quite thoroughly. After Garden Wall, I've been very much uh, re I've been reengaged with like, you know, modern animation and things like that. And I happened to come across that on Netflix. I think it's new. And it's a really like, you know, fun, whimsical fucking thing. Um, not horror related or adjacent in any conceivable way, but I've been enjoying it. Um, there's that. I've also been listening to the podcast, Dr. Death, which you should all listen to because it's very, very compelling. I started that up. and it bummed me out so hard. I couldn't listen past <laughs> the first episode. Dr. Really? Death. Yeah. Dr. Death. It's a good one. Um, it's a, I like, think it's done now. It's, only a few episodes, but it's great. It's a true crime sort of deal. Um, really, that's about it. I've been pretty busy this week. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Hey, Justin. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. I did watch some. Um, let me tell you this. Hey, Randy. I watched a movie called fucking Monster Club. The Monster Club from the early 80s. I found it on Amazon Prime, I believe, uh, as a free Prime streaming or whatever. It's got Vincent fucking Price in it. Oh, shit. Oh. And I'm like, okay, it's called Monster Club. It's got Vincent Price from the early 80s. I don't know how this is going to go exactly. And I put it on. It is the weirdest goddamn movie. It is very odd. It's like, I guess it's supposed to be partially musical or whatever. And I didn't know that. So there's just like extended scenes where dudes are on stage singing and dancing about like werewolves and shit. 
<laughs> nice. Um, and they're all like, it's like a band showcase of bands that exclusively cater to the hammer horror crowd. It's very odd. I'm and then there's that. like some really cheese balls, like semi dark, uh, twilight zone or, um, uh, semi twilight zone sort of shit that they go it's like anthology i guess where fucking vincent price is a vampire and he's like let me tell you all the stories of all the monsters at the monster club <laughs> and then he does and they're all dumb they make up a bunch <laughs> of shit about like crossbreeding vampires with werewolves and then they like a werewolf vampire and it's just crazy it's fucking weird i kind of want to make everyone watch it one day so i might <laughs> make force that issue Kind of just Underworld already did that, Randy. Okay, we know all about crossbreeding thanks to Underworld. Thank you, Underworld. <laughs> Thank you. Do you. But do you know what a mock is? Yeah, I don't think so. You didn't know about this fucking completely made up offshoot of fucking vampire werewolf uh, Gilman hybrids. It's fucked up. <laughs> huh. mm. Well, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to make sure and put that in there. Cool. Juice, what you've been watching? Uh, we are doing a special 31 days of Halloween. Get out of town. So oh. every oh, October, day huh? <laughs> of uh, 31 days of October. Did you know there's 31 days in October, guys? No. Um, anyways, we are watching a Halloween or horror related movie to Halloween uh, for the month of October every day. So on YouTube, you can see what the movie of the day is. Uh, so far, we have had four picks, and they were Trick or Treat. Uh, they were Murder Party was day number four. Um, Hell yeah. What else do we have? The Guest was day number three, and Ghost Watch was day number two. Ooh, Fucking I Ghost that Watch. Too. <laughs> yeah. So I, that. <laughs> I, I rewatched Ghost Watch and then went back and listened to our episode last Halloween about Ghost Watch, and that shit was cracking me up. Because <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, it that was the first time I had watched Ghost Watch, and I was so like tickled at it. Like it was cracking me up. Like, <laughs> originally like i thought that shit was so funny and so those are the first four picks uh this week so i've been watching those and we'll talk about them on slack and stuff like that um so if you want to get into the halloween season or need a little help need some movie recommendations we'll be doing a movie a day on youtube and also i've been listening to a shit ton of synth wave as well which is yeah. kind of a <laughs> Which is well, it's kind of appropriate. I didn't want to make another Halloween playlist, so I make like monthly playlists um, to kind of get into a bunch of different genres and different moods. And um, I didn't want to make another Halloween playlist for Halloween, so I picked Synthwave because it kind of feels like Halloweenish sometimes, or just kind of that dark mood. So I've been listening. To that. So I did a, a playlist for October of Synthwave. I've been listening to that, and it's really cool. It's been really helping get to like the fall mood and just that retro mood. I don't know. I've been digging on that as well. Me too, man. That's my favorite playlist you've made so far, actually. I've been listening to it ever since October 1st. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been pretty good. So, um, yep, yep, yep. And then just texting my drunk ass off on Slack, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, on that. So where can people, uh, find your bullshit playlist if they're, curious um let's see what this one is uh i'm under my tag name is kudos the kin so i have like yeah on spotify so i'm up to like 20 playlists now i try to release one every single month like usually on the first and um this one i think is ktk for kudos the kid like 20 i think labeled synthwave so i just try to call it what the genre is but if you find my profile they're they're all on there so if you're interested in some synthwave Check out Kudos the Kid. Get it. Get on it. Cool. Um, I, I watched a few movies. So Mikey and I got together last Friday and we had a bit of a triple feature. So mm. ah, triple feature. Talk about three fingers. Three right in the bum holes. The bung holes. He got a lot of butthole talk today. He got, <laughs> 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 yeah, he got punched down. in the glory hole. <laughs> So we watched, uh, the first movie we watched was Street Trash. Never seen it before. Oh, boy. 
Um, I almost watched that this week. That sounds like a Mikey pick. It was actually that was mine. I brought that one to the table. Oh. And uh, you know, it was uh like wildly overhyped, I think. It's a melt movie, which is like its own subgenre, apparently. It's basically about all these bums that get a hold of this liquor, this really cheap liquor that's been like rotting for years. They just like find it in a wall somewhere in a little liquor shop Hell and they yeah. start selling it for like a buck a bottle. These bums are drinking it and they just start melting. It's fucking crazy. Hell yeah. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> I think something like that happened in Chernobyl once, but it could be wrong. I like how stoked Randy is. It's, I don't know. There's like some pretty That'll... cool uh, practical effects, and like meltiness. Like they all melt into very vibrant like colors, like yellows and blues and greens and whatnot, which is kind of cool. But it's just like a really, really, really gross movie. There's like some bum rape in it. It's, God, why does it gotta go there? Why can't I they just know. melt? I don't why, know. Can't, why can't they just melt like decent moral Americans? <laughs> That's what I was just saying. Just melt the homeless. Oh, he's gotta, gotta go take to it. Word. Take it so far. Yeah, it's just it's pretty gross. There was actually one scene. This is like not really a spoiler, I guess, because this movie's dumb. You can't spoil it if you want to do. There's this one part where a bum <laughs> gets his dick cut off, and then they play like hot potato with it. They like the other bums just like throw the dick around this guy and he's trying to get his dick back so he can put it on ice and they won't give it back to him. <laughs> it's a severed cool. dick. Cool. You watch some weird stuff, Bob. I don't know, uh, man. Uh, so I was chasing that high after that chasing the dragon, man. I know <laughs> that's the fucking truth. <laughs> We watched Don't Go in the Woods Alone after that, which is like this 80s slasher movie. Um, it was like super bare bones, straight to the point. These kids just go into the woods for like a little camping trip, and there's this insane, huge man who's just like living in the woods wearing deer pelts, and he's got this big staff, and he just murders the shit out of people like very quickly and gruesomely. And it's got this very like stingy kind of like synth jabby soundtrack thing going on for it. it reminded me a lot of jaws in the in the way that it like it started really slowly and then like would just ramp up in tempo and then someone would get murdered i don't know it was actually pretty effective i liked it it was i'd never even really heard of it before mikey had that one it's good it's good shit it's a video nasty mikey. one of the video nasty a video nasty you can't <laughs> watch it can you that was more australian i think I don't, that was not anything. I don't oh, thanks. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not uh, doing anybody any favors. But same the last thing we watched was Pieces, which is streaming on Shutter. We watched well, the, yeah. the Joe Bob Briggs Presents. Of course you did. Pieces. Of course you fucking did. Uh, which... Uh, I, I was able you to have to. I know, right? I know. I, I I was able to introduce Mikey to Joe Bob Br- Joe Bob Briggs, and uh, you know he's forever grateful because Joe Bob Briggs is an American treasure. <laughs> so you're welcome, Michael. You're fucking welcome. Also, like pieces is ridiculously stupid, but it's so much fucking fun. The dumbest slasher ever. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Le. Le. All that shit. Love with, that. With one e. <laughs> with Bruce Le. Bruce God damn, I love that shit. It's good. So yeah, that's about it. That's what I've been watching. Let's go ahead and get into the back of box. Back of the box. Talk about uh ghost stories here. What's on the back of the box? What is on the back of the box? I'll tell you. Experience three spine tingling tales of terror to haunt your dreams. Spooky. A debunker of all things paranormal, Professor Goodman has devoted his life to exposing phony psychics and fraudulent supernatural shenanigans. His skepticism... (laughs) His skepticism... Skepticism is tested, however... Skepticism. Is tested, however, when he receives a case file on three chilling and inexplicable incidents, a night watchman haunted by disturbing visions as he patrols an abandoned asylum, an edgy young man involved in a hellish car accident deep in the woods, and a wealthy former banker visited by the spirit of his unborn child. Even more disturbing is that each of these macabre stories seem to have a sinister connection to Professor Goodman's own life. Will they make a believer of him yet? (laughs) 
<laughs> spooky again. It's so spooky. Oh my god. I what? can't even right now. So, so so there was something I really, really didn't like about this movie. Can you guys guess what it was? Right off the bat. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Lack of cooter. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> there, uh, yeah. I'm sure it was something very weird that did not bother Randy or I. What what was it? It was the well, not to get into any spoilers, but there's a twist. Oh yes. god. Do you want to, do uh, we just want to jump let's jump let's jump through the recommendation hoop and then we'll just yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, what yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about. Okay, Randy, so uh, spoil it. Randy, going into this, did you have any idea what you were doing? Did you give a fuck and would you recommend? I had seen the trailer and I was interested for sure um i wasn't really sure what i was in for and there were definitely parts of it that i did enjoy quite a bit but it's a soft recommend for me because i wasn't really clear what i was getting into but um i would say you get there's worse <laughs> worse ways to spend an hour and a half but um yeah and just not, not a very particularly strong recommend for me i juice i'm gonna say no on this one and not that it's like a terrible film but I found it like, like super plain. I don't know. There was just like, it. There's nothing quality about this movie. There's nothing that like that really. <laughs> well, no. There's nothing Damn. that like really stands out. It's got that Chrissy Orlando status. And sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm like, oh, that's kind of good. And then other times I'm like, oh, that's bad. But otherwise, it's just like okay. And um, so I wouldn't ever like. There's much bet like you could do worse, but there are much, 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 much better things that you could spend your time watching. Remember when you weren't a big fan of Mandy last week, and then we talked about it, and then you were like, "I kind of want to watch this movie again." Yeah, so convince me. All right, <laughs> challenge accepted. I don't oh, like this boy. as much as Mandy, though. To be to be fair, uh, but I definitely recommend it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's got some some cool stuff going for it. It's got some decent scares. Yeah, there might be a, a bit of a twist at the end, but I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I, I thought, you know, it was uh, uh, different in its own way. Not like crazy different, but um, I don't know. It, it it was like, it definitely was an anthology movie, but they were all tied together way more coherently than most anthologies would, would be, I think, uh, which was kind of cool. I don't know. I'd recommend it for sure. Put it on your eyeballs. Um, so, yeah, here goes the spoiler warning, and then we'll uh, get into it. Spoiler warning. Ghost stories. Here we go. So this movie, I think, Justin, I think you mentioned this when you first started watching it. You texted me, you were like, God damn, this movie with the jump scares. This movie starts Dude, with a jump scare. Oh like, the title God. card itself, it, it says ghost stories, and then it just, like, hits the screen, and there's just this loud scream in the background, which is a little bit jarring, but I like it because it, it reminded me of like House on Haunted Hill. That's exactly how that movie starts, just like with this black screen and a vacant scream and then the title card. I don't know. It's old yeah, school. Yeah, this... One of the few notes I took on this film to actually write down was this movie relies so, so much on jump scares and bullshit loud, like, noises. Like, big bang, like, bomb, like... It's like, I hate that shit because it's just like, it's just weak. It's covering up like weak scares because there's not really, to me, there wasn't a whole lot of like, like good scares, which is weird because I was looking at some of the reviews and stuff and they're like, oh, filled with some of the best scares I've seen. I was like, no, they were all jump scares. Like every single thing had to rely on this big noise to jump out like that bullshit that, you know, is fucking coming. I don't know. I I hate that shit. I don't think it's. I think those, it's weak. I, I think it. Those reviews are like always, always overhyped, you. though. Like intentionally overhyped. Just trying to get people. Sure. Like, you know, I know. Whatever. Don't don't put stock into them. That's all I'm saying. They they don't have integrity like us. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah, I wasn't so bothered by those jump scares as as you were. It sounds like juice, but um. It definitely like hinged a lot on that. Like no, the way this movie was set up was that you have this James Randi type character who goes around like debunking all of these mystics and things that take advantage of people. In fact, like there's bits of this movie that are taken directly from the life of James Randi, or I think it's James Randi, the Amazing Randi, um, from an honest liar. That's how I know him. Um, anyway, so 
it's kind of centered around this guy who does that. And he's inspired by another guy who's basically a stand in for James Randi, uh, the amazing Randi. And, um, basically the guy has gone back on all of his old beliefs that there is no such thing as ghosts that, you know, mysticism isn't real, all that stuff. He's like, no, it's all real. And he's this weird old guy with fucked up makeup looking on his face. And, um, <clears throat> he like, gives him three those like the three cases that he goes to like he's like yeah these made me a believer or whatever he says like the if you, if you can explain these then i'll be happy but i couldn't explain them and so he goes and looks at like the three the anthology of three that's in this movie are these three stories and none of them really live up to that and like none of them hold the weight of that promise that that yeah, like yeah none of them have any kind of like proof or things where you're like oh like how, like there's no mystery kind of behind it it's right. just like it's just this the first one's like this drunk dude in a bar who's like i saw a ghost and then the second one's this like really swirly kid who's like i saw the devil and the third one's just like this like banker guy and then it kind of goes off from there or, um, so, but mm. I, I agree. There's no like mystery or intrigue. And the thing about this movie that I was kind of saying, it's like so plain. There was nothing where I was like, oh, that's kind of unique or that's very interesting. Except the de- I think my favorite one of the three was the devil one. And there was something was kind too, of like, yeah, yeah like the, Is that the middle one. Of it. Yeah. yeah. The middle one with the kid. Um, that where one he's in the do it a lot for me. He like that actor. I thought did a great job. But, yeah, yeah. But it's I not really like that story is basically like like any urban legend you've ever heard, basically. And yeah. the thing is, like the way this movie is set up, it preps you to use your rational mind to say it's basically challenging you as a viewer to like, all right, debunk these. Then like you, you think there's no such thing as ghosts too? You in the audience. So why don't you take a look at this and try and explain it rationally from the perspective of our lead character? But the problem is that none of those things are even remotely, and none of them are more than like, like campfire tales. And there, yeah. I get why by the end of the movie, there's a reason for that. But for most of the movie, I'm sitting there like, well, this is just disappointing for me. And the only thing you have is jump scares, which is maybe why you're so annoyed by them is because there's no real tension. The tension I'm looking for is like, okay, so this is all explainable, but we're about to get to a part where this fucking Seder sitting in the backseat is going to like leave a handprint on this kid or something that would theoretically be proof or, or some sort of evidence that it actually happened that hasn't been debunked yet. None of that shit is explored at all. Yeah. I don't know. I think like these three individual cases, I guess maybe wouldn't be that inexplicable, but I still think they stand alone pretty well like if you're just looking at like you know a horror short or something i feel like they definitely have like legs to stand on like the first one like tony the the night watchman guy i felt like it was like a pretty successful like little ghost story like it was intact and it like ramped up continuously throughout the whole thing and yeah it had some jump scares but i felt like for whatever reason, they felt earned to me because in the end, like when you see the little ghost girl and she's holding a dead bird and she's like hugging on to Tony and calls him dad and he's in this room full of mannequins, like it's pretty fucking spooky, I thought. I, I don't know. I found it to be in the end pretty effective. In, I don't know. In the end, they're like, okay, but I, I agree with Randy that the way they set it up, it kind of makes it everything else itself. fall yeah it does it makes it fall flat because that that is the the vehicle that you're traveling through these stories with is these are so unexplainable and you're like well this is just a horror short and then like and and in that and in that way it's like yeah it's like okay again with the jump scares but at but that kind of comes back to my point that it just kind of felt plain then because then none of them like I wasn't like this is the best horror short I've ever seen. And then <laughs> I'm like, this isn't the best <laughs> anthology I've ever seen. And then I was like, well, nothing was really debunked. And then it threw in the twist. And I was like, well, I hate that twist. Really? And <laughs> yeah. OK, that was my favorite Here's- part. I think well let's no, let's uh, work up to it. Uh, I think let's let's go right, through. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go through. So you, yeah, we'll you've through. got the 
So the first anthology or the first one was the girl, the little girl that you were describing. And it's like in this old like women's center or something. I don't know. He's just he's just a security guard who sees a ghost in an old building. It's an old abandoned much. like loony bin specifically for troubled That's right, women. For it's, women. It's, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. condemned and he's just and there he, he watching the And he explicitly goes into the detail about, um, you know, like it. Like they were in there for basically fucked up reasons, which we've talked about on the cast before that yeah, women were institutionalized for really dumb right. reasons that right, were just right. basically to get them out of their husband's hair. Too mouthy. People are terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah. Too interested in sex. Not interested enough in sex. <laughs> Too hysterical. <laughs> Thinks on her own. Shit like that. But yeah, yeah. So that was the first one. The second one. And I agree that it's nothing more than just like a, a standard urban legend but that's not something you typically see in a film like not a lot of films just kind of focus on like just kind of kooky urban legends so it follows this kid who um who i agree like did kind of the best acting job or like it was this like yeah. most like stand out where i was like oh this is like interesting or different but like it's, him and martin freeman do the best work in this yeah for sure but it's essentially this kid who kind of took his parents car um, and he's driving through the woods. He's not really supposed to. And he hits the devil <laughs> with his car, which I just think it's really like kind of funny. Did you take yeah. that as the devil? I, I took I, it I as just really a demon, that's... but it, okay, I took it well, like, a, like a mythological creature, like a satyr or like a, oh. okay. Yeah. I thought it was uh, a yeah. demon. I said that, but I'm not sure. Well, I guess just because mostly because of like, I guess his obsession with the occult afterwards, like, I guess it doesn't like have to be the but devil, but his yeah, I mean, I was just like, was eh. plastered in pictures of like demons and shit. That's why I thought yeah. demon. Yeah. So yeah, he hits what could be the devil or he hits a goatish thing. Yeah. <laughs> with the his... mythological beast that speaks. Yeah, sure. So yeah, and some, yeah. So, um, he hits it with his car and it chases him. And, um, and then he's and like obsessed it. with him. That's, yeah, that's kind of it. And then he, well, like, they then only he gets but... grabbed by a giant tree creature. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, 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 Which yeah, yeah. That yeah, that happens kind of... impromptu of nothing. And <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't... yeah, kind of. But uh, uh, also, for, so whatever. just so to like set that story up a little bit. So we got our main character. He shows up to this kid's house. He knocks on the door. The kid's like super freaked out. He lets him in and the house is, it just feels kind of eerie. There's like this figure. The parents were right. Yeah. There's this figure. Well, you see the mom washing dish dishes and he kind of peers around the corner and there's this other figure like wearing a suit, very stationary next to the mom. And then the guy starts walking up the stairs and then the, the door that he was just peering through slams shut seemingly totally on its own. And then he sees this picture on the wall and a uh, portion of it's like covered in soot and he kind of clears it off and you see this hooded figure like that that's beneath the soot. And you don't really think anything of it at the time. And then he walks upstairs and then he like, hears somebody walking around on the third floor. The kid insists there's nobody up there. And then he sits down in the kid's bedroom to actually do this interview and mentions like how boiling hot the room is. And the kid's like, well, that's just how I like it. And so obviously there's like something with him in that house that he's not disclosing. Whatever it is, you don't really find out, but it just kind of like makes it feel very eerie and off put yeah. before you even get to the story. And I really like that build up a lot. And that kid sells That one was it. the most effective. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. because you said, like, with the house, it had some kind of... And that was the thing. That was when you kind of started to have some kind of mystery around yeah. it. But they never really kind of, like, flesh that out, I guess. Yeah, like, they don't. He's just like, like there's somebody upstairs. Story. He's like, no, yeah. there's not anybody upstairs. So, like, that was... That's why it was kind of my favorite. Like, that one felt like the most connected to the vehicle story. Like, oh, it's a sure. mystery. And also, like, the acting was, like, off-putting, and you, like, there was a little bit of, like, a general tension that wasn't based around jump scares, but then that, but it, but it doesn't really, develop, but then it's done, and so I was, like, and there yeah, was kind really of, it, all of them of kind it. of seemed to abruptly end, like, the first one ends kind of on a scare moment, which is good, but the second one ends on a scare moment that's just that tree monster, and it, it comes out of nowhere, and it just sort of, 
in the scene and then really yeah. quickly he's our, our protagonist has moved on from there and is investigating the site and sees that it's an upturned tree like a tree that's been uprooted um or like tipped over by time or weather or whatever and then we go he goes and investigates martin freeman who's like a chatty little uh so like <laughs> socialite yeah. guy who's like Priddle. he's very wealthy Friedel is that his name Priddle, yeah Priddle. Priddle. okay Mike i didn't remember that Priddle. but I think he's pretty fucking hilarious in that role, by the way. I th- like him walking around and just prattling on about how, yeah. I don't know, he's, he's very, very boastful and very braggarty and very, like, very into himself, obviously. Very selfish is kind of what you're getting from him. And he tells his story, which is, uh, remind, remind so me his, of the setup for that. His wife is 40 years old and they're trying to conceive and they can't. So they do the in vitro fertilization thing. And um, I, she's seven months pregnant after doing that. And then she starts like spotting and having some trouble. So he drives her over to the hospital, um, leaves her there and she's being watched after. And then he's like kind of home alone and he's in the nursery, just kind of like tidying up. And um, you see like, there's kind of a stack of diapers that just kind of goes flying and he's kind of confused by it. And then there's just like a bunch of random baby things also like sitting on the dresser and they just like, turn into this big organized stack. All that was a, a cool sudden. effect. Yeah. And he's kind I of like that effect. freaked out about that. And you're like, what the hell? And, um, it kind of goes to the next day and I guess he's got like kind of a, a, a weird feeling. And then he hears like some glass breaking in the baby's room. So he goes up there and like, you know, his wife is still in the hospital. She hasn't come home yet. Um, and then he looks in the baby's crib and there's, it looks like there's, a baby covered by a sheet and he's like, what the fuck? So he walks over to the crib and then it just, the sheet just kind of falls flat and there's a little thermometer on the baby's crib and it goes to like, you know, super, super cold and then a bunch of flowers just like die and rot. And then there's yeah. this like super ghostly figure, which is another pretty serious jump scare in the movie that like jumps out into his face and says like, we, we are dead or something like that. And it's, you're led to believe that it's his wife and then he, you know, calls the hospital and it turns out that she gave birth and died, died during birth. So, um, so Priddle's like, and the, 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 the baby is a monster also, <laughs> right? The baby is, was like this massive thing that split her in half, apparently, which is, Ugh. which is horrific. And he calls the baby Barty. It's, I guess they named it Barty. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, the, the mom dies and Rifkin's like, uh, or, uh, not Rifkin, sorry. Priddle is like telling this story to Goodman. And as he concludes, like they're, they're sort of on his property and he's like, you know, pulling the shotgun out as if they're going to go like hunt quail or something. And then he finishes his story and he just like blows his fucking head off with his shotgun. Yeah. This movie is nothing without its sudden ends to its stories. <laughs> yeah. That is true. And then that, that from that that, 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 leads... that connection will get into like the twist or whatever. That one's the only oh, God damn. Uh, let's just get into the twist. <laughs> okay, so Goodman well, yeah. Goodman at this point goes back uh to to uh what uh Cameron's little camper, the the guy who sent him on this quest the, basically. The old man. The old yeah. man, yeah. And he's at this point, Goodman's like, This is all a hoax. You know, I I don't believe any of this. It's all bullshit. Um, you know, everything you see is exactly how it is. None of this is real. And then that's when Cameron like tears his face off and he reveals himself to be Priddle who you saw just commit suicide. And you're like, okay, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? And then, oh my God, you mean that was makeup? I know. <laughs> get out of town. It, uh, weird. It, uh, it did look weird. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then something even like stranger happens. Where So Priddle like, reaches to the back of the camper and rips the camper oh, yeah in it's half. like paper yeah, yeah as I if it was a that. big sheet of paper yeah that was cool and yeah, there's, that was cool. there's like this dark doorway behind it and he's like he invites him to follow him basically and he's like it's just you barty me and you know who and you're like what the what the fuck is this kook talking about so yeah there's been a hooded figure sort of like following him for a couple scenes now too or appearing in the distance yeah and it seems to get like closer and closer so the hooded figure was the one i mentioned in that photograph and the second and the second little short story and then the third one um just sort of in the middle of priddle's rambling 
the hooded figure appears like directly in front of Goodman's face and scares the shit out of him, but then just kind of like vanishes. She's like, what the, what the hell's going on with this? Um, also, uh, Goodman has this like premonition of himself, uh, dead in his car in the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he opens, he opens it and it disappears or yeah. whatever. Like, yeah, it was like, like in the car window. window. That was one of the effects, like where it's him in the car window, but as he opens it and it like disappears, that looked really cheap to me. I don't know. There are a couple things in really? this film. Yeah. There are a couple things like that specifically. Was, I liked it. Yeah. I don't know. There were things like that made it feel like a like a TV horror movie, like it like it was made for TV, and that was one of those moments. I don't, it just looked weird to me. I was gonna say this: the thing that I, I we I'm not not to like not to distract us from the spoiler or whatever, but uh, the whole like the three stories that we got very much to me feel like not so much like really intense good horror for an adult it seems like really great episodes of are you afraid of the dark or something Dude, i thought the same exact thing yeah i thought the I, same I, thing i thought tales from the crib originally but yeah same yeah same but less silly than that sure but yeah, yeah like where it's yeah i was like there's it's nothing like, wrong with that but the promise was something different i feel exactly. like from the outset. and so the journey suffered even if the like the sum of its parts i think holds up which like i think for me the spoiler does actually I'm happy with the spoiler, yeah, which we should too. just talk about now. Yeah. So yes, they uh, Priddle like take takes Goodman to this like flashback kind of situation, and basically you're you're led to this big tunnel in the woods with these uh, these two kids hanging out, and uh, this little kid, this uh, other like teenager or whatever is walking by, and it turns out to be Goodman as a teenager, and they like call him over. Um, and they're kind of bullying him around. And this exact scene of the, like these teenagers by this tunnel is the, the photograph that's hanging on the wall in the second story. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of bullying Goodman. And then another kid shows up and he's wearing a hood and you're like, Oh, so that that's the hooded figure we've been seeing throughout this whole movie. Um, and he drops the hood and you see that it's just this kid who's got some sort of mental handicap so they kind of leave Goodman alone and they start picking on this other kid that just showed up and they tell him to walk down the tunnel and there's like 10 Just numbers. like a storm drain. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. It's a big storm drain. Yeah, so they tell him to walk down it uh, and uh, there's 10 numbers painted on the wall and they say, you know, find the 10th number, tell us what that number is and if you're right, you can join our gang. So he does it. He's walking down the tunnel and he gets, you know, way the hell down there and the, the whole thing is there is no 10th number. They just want him to keep walking and walking and walking until he gets too scared or whatever. So he gets down there. Uh, he's super asthmatic, can't find the t- find the 10th number and he kind of panics and has uh, an asthma attack. Um, and then yeah, it the, gets like really narrow, like yeah. as the tunnel goes, he has yeah. to like start crawling or whatever. And yeah, he just like dies at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. The two bullies haul ass immediately after he's, you know, after they can't hear him responding anymore. And then Goodman kind of hangs out for a second. You can tell he's like sort of wrestling internally as to whether or not he should go in or not. And then he just hauls ass too. Doesn't do anything. And that has obviously like kind of haunted him his whole life, which I think is like representative of this, the hooded figure kind of like popping up throughout this whole movie. Um, and then, uh, you get this sort of like, after all that's happened, he's relived that moment. Priddle is back and he's talking to grown up Goodman and, uh, he's like feeding his little Barty kid. He's got, he's like rocking his, his demon child and he's feeding him dog food, which is super. Yeah. And then you've got uh, uh, the the hooded figure. And he's giving him shit. Yeah, he's giving him hardcore shit. Priddle's giving, <laughs> giving away some hard shit. And he, he does not know what's happening. He calls him a passenger just because he doesn't ever do anything, I guess. Other than, like, you know, ruin other people's beliefs, essentially. That's kind of yeah, like like, what he's done with his life. Yeah. And he's like, what did you choose to do with your life? Just shit on other people's beliefs. And, yeah. you know, like, I forget the exact phrasing he used, but it was pretty... That's pretty much like as close as you get to a thesis statement in the movie, I think. Yeah, which, he, he says, uh, on me. You, you spent your days reducing life's biggest questions to nothing but atoms and molecules. That's kind of like... And he's, he's basically calling him a pompous windbag because yeah. he thinks he's figured out the universe, and but he, like, by just sheerly rejecting everything that could possibly be beyond his understanding. Yeah. So, but, that's... Then, at this point, you've got uh, the the little kid with the hood is like 
much bigger, but he's like a zombie version of himself. <laughs> and he's like terrifying Goodman. And then he kind of rips the backdrop as if it was paper again yeah. and reveals like another little passageway. And, and he, he, there's like this big gurney and he kind of like lays Goodman on the gurney and slowly puts his finger. Goodman's like, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Freaking he like lays out. on him. Oh, he, yeah. He puts, puts his finger in his mouth. In his mouth. Which Ugh. is fucking gnarly. Um, Second time that's happened in the movie, right? Yeah, yeah, the little girl did that to the to the guy in the, the first, in the first little yeah. story or yeah. whatever. Um, and then uh, that kind of vanishes, and then you're you're launched into like a a real hospital room, and there's a bed with Goodman in it, and then um, the uh, the kid from the second movie or the the second short rather, he walks in and he's like a nurse and he's looking at you know, the charts and, and whatnot on Goodman's bed. And then uh, Priddle walks in and he's like a doctor and he's kind of like looking over what, you know, talking about um, how Goodman's doing with the kid and how he's 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 got the lock-in syndrome is what they call it. He's locked in, you know, he's like, he's there, but he's not cognizant, you know? Yeah, he, so he tried to kill himself in, right. the, in his car. Right, right, right. Right. So that was kind of like the whole, basically. yeah, and it, yeah, and he didn't die, but yeah, he's like kind of it's basically brain dead. conscious, he's a vegetable. Yeah. but yeah, or, his eyes are open, so like they have this mirror, so he can like see around the or see outside the window, or through something. the window and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but it's so the janitor, the janitor is the old guy from the first, right? Yeah, so it also, turns out the that everybody place. like Priddle is the, his doctor and the devil kid is like the nurse or whatever the orderly <laughs> and the scarecrow is the yeah, janitor exactly. and the tin yeah. man is the water spigot <laughs> and the water <laughs> nah, but everything so, in the room base every, everything in that room basically has ties to other like to the ghost stories in this movie yeah, and basically I, the idea being that <laughs> you know I at the end of the movie you realize that okay so if this guy's in here, what did we just watch? And the answer is, it's his delusions. He, it's his brain firing synapses that either he can't control or it's all he has to control. So he goes into himself and yeah. just thinks through these manic well, fucking no, yeah. uh, psychosis. And the that's whole, like the whole thing at the end is like, I hope he's having sweet dreams or whatever. Yeah. And it's like he's trapped in this eternal nightmare or whatever. And it's like, yeah. oh, but, that's horrifying. But it's trapped in the eternal nightmare because. <laughs> there's nothing he can do to like set right the things he's done in the past. So it's basically this big allegory for ghost stories. Aren't stories about being haunted by specters. They're being haunted by your mistakes yeah. and yes. guilt, guilt and all these other things. So that's kind of what they're going for. It seems like to me. And I think that's, I don't know if you guys disagree with that, but I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. What that is. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I, agree. I think I'm that's what sure. they're aiming super clear, but well, I mean, it wasn't clear yeah. to me right away either. I had to like consider it. And then I was like, Oh, well there's this one scene where they actually explicitly talk about how like, yeah, like ghosts aren't spec aren't spirits. Like in a Vincent price movie, they're thing, their memories that yeah, are things that you're done trapped. Or and done. all he has are his memories. And that's like, he's basically forced by his own brain yeah. to go back into the worst memory, the most guilt that he's ever felt. And then, remember where he is too theory like at least that's how i took it so not well, only did he experience explain. that kid what a kojak kojak's death again right. feels yeah. that guilt gets guilted by his own brain for it in the form of martin freeman and then gets placed back into bed with his fucking demon who is kojak's corpse violating him in a way that he is physically being violated at all times in a way that he can't prohibit yeah himself. well he says throughout the movie like his whole explanation for why like there are no ghosts or whatever he's always saying like the mind sees what it wants to see or right. whatever the mind and so like the whole thing is like that's all he has left all he has is his mind and he's like eternally trapped in it yeah and that's the thing is like the mind sees what it wants to see is a like obviously like a huge like that's the tagline of the movie i'm pretty sure but um the idea of that at the beginning is okay. So people will trick themselves into believing the things that they want to believe, or that if they think it's true, then it's true. It's it's only, it's true to them, even if it's not true in a, in a statistical factual sense, but it later for him come, turns out to not be true because he cannot avoid the things he doesn't want to see, which are his guilty memories. He cannot, no matter how hard he tries to debunk 
mystical phenomenon, he's still got this thing that follows him around. And I appreciate that the movie on that level for sure. Like, I think that works. And I think that if it had been maybe framed differently, I would have felt differently throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah. I think that visual definitely components. hurt it as well. Cause they're That's trying the to is- do too many kind of different things. Like the whole like debunking and then like the kind of stories. And then, Oh, also it's like a twist and try to explain that away. And but those it makes parts sense from me don't really like it. I mean, it makes like logical sense because that's what they tell you. And like, because it's all a dream, like literally anything could make sense. And I mean, it makes it doesn't yeah. not makes like it's not like that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't like make a whole lot of sense. Like, I the mean, it's like know, they like, worked backwards. They were they wrote it backwards. It seems like to me they wrote it backwards from yeah. the point is this is what ghosts really are. And this is what happens if you like, like what kind of person would only see what he wants to see that we could like tw- take that and pull the rug out from under our viewers. Well, it's going to be somebody who's skeptical. Okay. So what kind of skeptics do we have? Oh, people who debunk mysticism. Well, there's our outlet for three stories. Like, yeah. it seems like they wrote, like logically they worked backwards from their point, which isn't like, the best way to do it nor the worst but it just kind of you kind of feel it it should the seams are showing on it a little bit to me i don't know if you get like it just seems yeah, like they were yeah. working they, they had this idea of okay so here's a guy who's a skeptic but he is it he is a skeptic because he's running from his the ghosts of his past the demons yeah. of his past each one, like it's, each one of the pieces, great to me are like okay which i guess is kind of what you get with anthology sometimes like the the pieces to me, like if I take them individually, I'm like, you know what? They're like fine enough. So yeah. if this were like a show and like each week I saw like the devil episode, I'd be like, oh, that was a pretty good episode. Yeah. Or like the, you I think know, this would have worked a lot as a show. Yeah. <laughs> or like, like yeah, series. the little girl ghost. I'd be like, oh, that was a good episode. But when they try to put it all together and try to make it work. And then here, here's the thing I don't like about twist endings or the way they're done this way so like the sixth sense if like you were really paying attention and you were clever enough or or maybe not even had to try that hard you could like figure out before the twist that bruce willis was dead you know and like there are things in this movie that they mention that once you know the twist, you can go back and say like, oh, yeah. at one point they mention, you know, like the dude tries to commit suicide. And then later in the scene, he's like, oh, you should have killed yourself with a shotgun, not, you know, in the car like you dumb fuck. And I don't know, just like little things like that where they try to tie it together makes sense. But there's really nothing that would lead you to believe throughout this movie that this dude is sitting in a coma and this is all his dream. Like, not really. Not until, like, maybe the dude rips his face off and you're like, okay, like, but that's, like, way toward the back end of the movie. Like, almost revealing the twist. And there's, I just, like, feel like when you do a twist like that where there's no possible way for the audience to know and it's just a twist for twist's sake, like, it's not clever, like, like the oh. um, like the sixth sense. I just I don't like it. I, it's just like it feels lazy. I don't know. I think this movie has way more of a reason to have that twist than the sixth sense does. The sixth sense was doing that was like that defined what a twist was to people, like especially I people know. our age coming but up. I know, and that I know people who like sitting through the sixth sense knew that before the twist, like yeah, and not even like close to the twist knew that Bruce Willis was dead. Spoiler, if you've never seen Sixth Sense, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but like, knew, you could say, like, because at the beginning, he is shot, and, like, he's visiting this kid, and there's, like, red, and he's not talking, and there are, like, signs. This movie more or less, like, mentions things, like, oh, by the way, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, after the twist has happened, they try to make those things make sense. I mean, I don't know if I agree with that fully. Because I don't think it's that different because you talked about like the red coloring and stuff. That's like that could just as easily be a stylistic choice by the director and not just not an actual indicator of a plot point. We, meanwhile, you've got literally you have shots of the mirror facing the window interspersed throughout this movie, like something that you don't that doesn't make sense until the end, but can make sense if you're like if maybe if you are clever enough you can figure it out. There's a lot of weird. I'll, there should be a. I think there was an odd feeling that there was something out of place in this world. And certainly Martin Freeman's fucking makeup. But um, I think there was some, but I, even, even if there wasn't like, I'm not too bothered because I think this movie had 
a point to what it was saying that they pulled the rug out from under us for a reason. And the reason was to show with what this guy's like to, to reveal to us that this is what this guy's going through. He's hunting ghosts for this reason to basically take a new spin with this character that we've been following this whole time and who we sympathize with up until the point where we see this, his worst guilt trip, basically the worst thing that's ever happened to him and ha- worst thing he's ever done, which is to ignore a dying disabled boy. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think there's a good, compelling reason to do that in this movie. And in the sixth sense, I would argue that maybe it's less compelling. It's like, oh, like it's good. It's a good twist, uh, but it's not. I don't know. I guess I'm splitting hairs with that. I just like I, the real problem I have with this movie is not that. That's the part I like about it because it makes a pretty fine point, as far as I'm concerned, um, about this character. But the thing that bothers me is that it's the way it sets up this movie, even though it's with a purpose, like having him be a skeptic makes perfect sense to, for what happens in the end. But it sets us up for failure as an audience going through this journey as seeing things as a skeptic. Like you don't start the movie Mandy, which we just watched last week with Nick, Nick cage saying like, yeah, I don't believe in ghosts or spirits. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in revenge either. You know, I'm just a regular guy and you know, I'm specifically go out of my way to tell people that revenge isn't real and that (laughs) ghosts aren't real. And there's no such thing as demons or cults. I've lost connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I don't, laughs> but yeah, it's uh, whatever. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> no, no, yeah, we got you. You're good. Oh, we never lost you. I thought you meant you lost connection with your point. <laughs> oh, no, my screen said I lost connection. So I just took it as a word. I couldn't hear you guys. <laughs> no, we still had you. Um, but you, <laughs> now, but that whole thing was like, I don't know. It, it, you started this movie setting the setting the audience you set up the character in such a way that the audience went with him you want to meet him where he's at okay okay i'm a skeptic um uh mysticism skeptic going through these events that are supposed to rattle my faith so rattle my fucking faith in science and and rationality and the movie refuses to do that instead it lays a lot of breadcrumbs towards some alternate future which just works out fine but that's all you have to like at the end of the day that's the main thing that saves this movie from being a disappointment because each individual story on its own didn't, they didn't scratch that itch that they fucking tickled on my feet. You know, like I wanted to see something that would rattle my faith if I were in this guy's position. And instead I got a lot of little cryptic and odd moments that were referring to something that I don't know about yet. So that's my real issue with it. I mean, it's, I mean, crypticism is, I think it's cryptic for the sake of crypticism, not so much a twist for the sake of, Twists, if that makes sense. Twisticism. Twisticism. Yeah. Um, do you guys are you ready to rate this thing? Do you have anything else to add? Not I'm ready. Okay, Justin, why don't you kick us off out of five? How do you feel about ghost stories? Uh, overall, I'm gonna give this movie a two out of five. Um, I just wasn't really impressed overall with it it had some some moments that i thought were were ultimately fine um anything that i thought like was was good or good enough in this movie still didn't really leave any kind of impression on me um anthologies are are hard um you're always gonna have like pieces that are hit or miss and that that's just what you get with anthologies and i feel like that kind of lives up to that expectation it's like i thought this one was you know intriguing or pretty good but it didn't connect very well with this other one um i really i don't like the twist um i don't like kind of like randy said like oh the tin man or whatever it's like oh here's this guy and here's why you thought he was swirly and here's the you know i don't like it just felt cheap to to me personally i don't i that's not something that I'm super into, even if it's making some kind of overall point or whatever. I just didn't like it's I don't know, it's kind of dumb to me, honestly, and I just don't prefer it in films. Um, yeah, none. Of, I, I and I don't like jump scares. So a lot of this is personal opinion. I like I don't like twists that like you can't really figure out beforehand, I guess. Um, I don't like jump scares i don't like when they rely on like the loud ass noises to like scare you it feels cheap to me so a lot of this movie from a personal preference felt cheap 
and a lot of it wasn't earned in my opinion so i didn't particularly enjoy it and i think right after the movie i like text i was like ah, i didn't really like that movie it just like <laughs> it was a pretty much and nothing that we've analyzed today like has really kind of changed my mind and a lot of it i recognize is personal preferences like for just the style mm-hmm. of it and like how how it's written so i recognize that and the pieces themselves like i said if it were a show i'd probably be more receptive to it I agree with Randy that like the the way they set it up doesn't do it any favors for me personally. Like I was kind of leaning into that thing as well. Like I want to be a skeptic. Like what what's the mystery around this? And outside of the of like the devil kind of kid with his house and like who's upstairs, there wasn't a whole lot of mystery to me. I wasn't trying to figure out is there going to be a twist or anything. I don't there it seems like a missed opportunity. Like if you're going to be do a twist, at least like add some mystery in there. So people are trying to figure something out, but I'm not like each one of these was just like, Oh, it's a a drunk dude in a bar and it's just a regular old ghost story. Like there's nothing stand out to me that intrigued or I don't know. And so, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't crazy about this film and I don't think I'll ever watch it again. Okay. Uh, Randy, how do you feel out of five? Hmm. I think I liked it more than Justin, but I'm not super enthused on this movie. Like I'm not crazy, crazy over it. I will say, I mean, I'm going to reiterate myself a bunch, I'm sure. But the the big issue was that I didn't, I, I think this movie set up the journey poorly for from an audience perspective, but I understand the reason that they wrote each part. Like I understand like the, I think I understand anyway, the intention of each part, like there's a lot that happens even from the first frame. I watched this movie almost twice. Cause I skipped back through to sort of remind myself of some things. And I ended up watching probably half of it over again. Um, and there is a lot of material that is meant to foreshadow what we find out at the end, like a lot of stuff, but it all seems very incongruous with what's happening in these individual stories, which is what I'm focused on because I was told to pay attention because the brain sees what it wants to see. And I don't want to be fooled. Like that's the whole, like the thing is it's like watching Penn and Teller's like fool us or whatever they should call that show where people try and like, it's like inviting you to try. It's like an Agatha Christie movie or, or a novel rather. And you're being invited to sort of solve this issue that turns out is not really the issue at all. Like you're solving an entirely different mystery that you're not never introduced to from, from the outset. You're just sort of like, left these little signposts that don't really point in any particular direction. They're just sort of like, it seemed very random and not, not in any way that points in a specific direction. I think maybe Justin was right about that. Actually, they don't really point in the direction of the twist. They're just things that you can look back to and say, Oh, they were setting this up from the beginning. And from that perspective, like, yeah, I, I, I kind of like what they like it. I like the ending. I like how things kind of wrapped up and came together Every part was involved with that ending. Every little incongruous shot was there with the purpose of filling out that last bit, but it fucked up the part that we were going through. (laughs) Like the part that I, as an audience member was going through with the intentions that were set forth for me. This movie even itself was like at one point, um, what is the lead character's name? Goodman. Goodman. Thank you. Goodman goes back to uh, his, whatever the, the guy who sent him on the journey Martin Freeman in, in costume. And he's like, nothing in here could have been, would have been hard to disprove if you're a five year old or some shit like that. Like a fifth grader could, uh, could prove these false. And I think that's like their way of saying like, yeah, we know these aren't like real big mysteries. Like we were told. So like, this is our way of sort of like backing out of that, but it kind of is too late at that point because they already played them all very straight and you're already like experiencing them as if you're a detective trying to solve what this issue is. And if you can't solve it, then from the perspective of you being in this guy's shoes as the protagonist, you're you, that, that raises the tension for you. It just doesn't really make good on that. And I think that's a big problem. I, I understand the reasoning for all the decisions that they made for the most part, I think, but I just don't think that the, every right move was made honestly and it it suffers for it so i'm gonna go with like a three i just uh, i feel like the the individual stories could have done a lot better for themselves if they weren't quite so beholden to the overarching story or if maybe it was just presented differently from the beginning that's really my main thing cool uh 
I think I when I sat down to watch this movie, I kind of looked at it through a different lens than you guys. Yeah, it definitely does like the the you know sort of wraparound story does set it, set it up in a way where you're kind of uh, keeping a very close eye, making sure that you don't miss anything. But I kind of like after they set that up, I just settled in to watch this as an anthology. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get three stories. They're going to be spooky, whatever. That's kind of what I was strapped in for. And that's definitely what I got, um, which I thought they were all pretty serviceable. Actually, the third one was my least favorite. The first two I, I like quite a bit, actually. Um, the, the kind of the saving grace to, to the third one is when it sort of, you know, uh, the, when the cat's out of the bag, and you're like, holy shit, there's, there's something else going on here. And that kind of connects all the little breadcrumbs they left throughout the three stories that you just watched that... I don't know, even if they weren't amazing, you know, maybe they weren't the best shorts I've ever seen. It kind of shored them up a bit and, uh, you know, connected the whole movie in a way in which anthologies rarely are able to do. If ever, I, I you know, I thought the, the wraparound was by far the most compelling part of this movie, and that's why I like it so much. Um, it, it, it enhanced every story that you had seen before, and, I you know, it's just super rare that that happens. Um, with an anthology at all, usually the wraparound is just kind of like fluff. Like you could you could totally leave it for the most part, um, but it it kind of did what I think it's initially supposed to do um, with enhancing the three stories that you're given here. Um, and the the jump scares, I get that that shit's like old. Like yeah, we get it, jump scares. But they, I don't know, they work for me. They for the most part. As long as there's something else in the movie, I can endure the jump scares. They don't really bother me that much. And in this movie, I think it definitely has a lot more going for it, so I kind of let the jump scares fall by the wayside. There's some decent like acting going on here, I, and it's just... it's a, I don't know. It felt uh, original enough to me to, to kind of... Uh, I don't know. Be happy with it. I'm, I'm going to give it a three as well. I it didn't like love it or anything. Um, it didn't rock my world, um, but I definitely recommend it still. Um, so our aggregate is going to be a 2.7 on ghost stories. And uh, Juice, why don't you go ahead and take us into our Rotten Tomatoes segment, and we'll see what the critics and audience have to say. Certified fresh to death. Take it away, dog. All right, let's hop into it. Let's go around the table and see if we can guess these uh, critic scores. On Rotten Tomatoes first, uh, pretty good sample size. A um, hundred critics counted for this, and it's a pretty new movie, right? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty new. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so pretty good sample size, a hundred. So, uh, Randy, why don't you kick us off? Uh, out of a hundred, what do you think the critics rated this? Mm, the critics, I'm going to say 80. No, you know what? 70. 70. All right. Uh, Bob? I am going to go 77. 77. I got to teach Randy a lesson here real quick. Never tinker, Randy, because you lost (laughs) it. It was (laughs) Bob's going to take it. It's a certified fresh, uh, apparently. Uh, 82% <laughs> uh, from the critics. Randy would have taken it with an 80, but Bob stole it away with the 77. Um, so, yeah, yeah, certified fresh. And the <laughs> Randy, you're not worried about that? The fleet game. Um, <laughs> um, the critic consensus is Ghost Stories offers a well-crafted, skillfully told horror anthology that cleverly toys with genre tropes while adding a few divisively frighten, uh, frightful twists. Um, eh, I don't know. Still not impressed. I was, I will give it to Bob. I, I, from his review, I get, I guess kind of like on the reverse perspective where I see that as like the main story um, and how that falls flat to me. But I get like where most anthologies fall flat with their wraparound story and that being more impressive. Like I, I understand that. I like, I can, I get that perspective. I, I like that they did that. I, I, I really do. And I, I think that's, that's the subversion that I like out of it, but mm-hmm. it seems like it was just my experience watching it was not pleasurable because I was waiting for an axe to fall that was never meant to fall in the first place. Yeah. And you could say that that's subverting expectations and that it's true, but I feel like it's not to the benefit of the movie necessarily, or not to the benefit of me as a viewer. 
Um, maybe right. to the benefit of the point, but I think there's probably a, a way they could have handled that that didn't set me up so hard for a failure. <laughs> yeah. But let's get into that audience score. So this movie from the critics is certified fresh and it has a solid sample size. So it's not any bullshit cooked numbers or anything. So good for ghost stories. I, you know, I'm happy for it. I'm glad people are digging it. But let's see what the people think about this. Let's see if it holds up with the people. people. Uh, s- much, uh, much smaller size. Uh, we're only looking at 2000 uh, user ratings. Um, so that's pretty small. Um, but, uh, Randy, what do you think the people think about this one? Um, I think probably people are kind of split on this like we are. Uh, I'm going to say, but I think probably most of them liked it. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick with 70. See when that takes me. 70. All right, Bob, what do you think? I'll go, uh, I'll go 80. 80. Randy's going to take it this time. No tinkering involved. Uh, it's a <laughs> six, 60%. So it is much 60%? more split. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, it's still a positive on this film. Um, but yeah, average rating 3.5 out of 5, which would actually be 70%. I don't know. It says audience <laughs> score 60% liked it. Yeah. Um, uh, I forgot the average rating on the critics actually was 7.2 out of 10. So um, if you look at the average ratings between the critics and the audience, they're actually closer than what the scores actually show. But yeah, so overall, a general positive note. I am offbeat with the people on this one. Usually I'm a man of the people, but I'm not. Not today, Juice. Not today. Not today. Not I'm going against today. the grain. I'm a rebel. Ooh, you got two I'm a rebel we rated this kicks. We rated yeah. this overall ourselves pretty low compared to the average. Yeah. 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 For sure. It's kind of interesting. Maybe it's a bunch of Brits. Maybe it's a British thing that we don't get. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> there is this really nice yes, quote on the yes. back of the box here by Edgar Wright. It says, a wicked, uh, a wicked screen debut with an especially nasty and insane last 20 minutes. Right there. Dude, I'll tell you what. Though. There were a couple of sh- shots in this movie that I really did. Lo- I-, I loved Martin Freeman pointing to the wall where he's like, check out this wall or whatever, like as the ax is about to drop for this guy or as this, the, the, the twist is, or some of the twists are st- starting to reveal themselves. Yeah. Like, look at this. Look at this. And it's just like, yeah, touch it, touch it. And then he like puts his finger through this fucking wall. Yeah, that was like, cool. it's made of paper. I loved that. Just his face as he's like, no, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Touch it. Like, he's but being even, such a dick about it. Even that, that, so another one, that was another scene where it was cool. Like, Oh, it's paper. But the look of it felt like it was something on TV like this. uh, To me, it felt like something that should have been a show like each one of the effects. Like if it were in a show, I'd be more impressed. But since it was a movie, I was like, that looks like a show. I don't know what it is. It's just something about the texture of it all looks like something that was made for television or made. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have a problem with the effects in this movie, really, for the most part. I mean, maybe a couple of things. They were. I didn't love the. I didn't love the look of the the seder, but I think that was based on like. (laughs) I think that's based on like whatever historical quote unquote accounts of that creature are. I think I liked that one because it leaned more into like that. Like I at times it was almost kind of funny to me, or like yeah like more ridiculous and the kid like kind of hammed it up a little bit. Like he did a good job, but it was a little more just on the ridiculous side. And I was like, Oh, like I, I don't know. I, I was kind of enjoying that feel. That more. kid plays distress. What's this kid's name? Yeah. That he plays good. a distressed kid better than anybody I've ever yeah. seen. He does. Uh, really well. Alex Lothar is his name. He's great. I love his shit. Very weepy. That black mirror. episode. it's very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, also, Rand- they didn't give us a cooter, you know, so they got to take it down a notch. You are the cooter <laughs> of the week this week, Justin. Yeah, I don't know. Could the again. bullies be the cooters? Could could that could who be know. the cooters? The, the bully? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, in a pinch, they, I, I mean, that maybe they fall somewhere on the spectrum. But I don't think they hit enough. He's a coward. He's deserving of death. He dresses like yeah. a dick. He acts manipulative. Yeah. I mean, he hits a lot of the points. He's just not a very high tier cooter. Yeah, yeah, pretty low, weak. Low weak balling, case. low balling it. He checks the boxes, but they're uh, they're not hundred percent power they're levels. They're checked in nah, pencil. After last week, after Jeremiah, <laughs> everything's gonna pale in comparison. They can't all be uh, handy. Your world has darkened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say though, I will you. say in my 
extremely drunken state. I was very concerned about catching these scooters. I, will, I mentioned it several times. I was on the hunt. It was. I think this is how the new season of uh, True Detective is going to start. <laughs> With five bottles of soju and two pints of beer. I was. I was determined to continue and True this noble work. We got to catch them all, Bob. It's the principle. <laughs> it's the it's, principle. It's all about the principle, Bob. <laughs> you know I'm right. I'm as a flat oh, principle. Shit. Next time you drink that much, we should definitely record an episode. <laughs> We've recorded ourselves very drunk many times, but Rob always manages to not have them anymore oh. until, I don't know, one of us runs for Congress or some shit. <laughs> They're stored. So I've got a special hard drive locked away. Uh, Randy, do you have any trivia on this? Very little. We can do it quickly if you want. All right, dog. Let's do it. It's totally it's time for trivia. trivia. Take it away. So there's, like I said, very little, but um, of interest. Yes, this is uh, a directorial debut by Jeremy Dyson and Andy. What's this dude's name? Fuck, I lost his name. Um, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, uh, everyone. Jeremy Dyson and Andy Nyman. Andy Nyman, thank you. Uh, it's their first. Um, it's their directorial debut as a as a couple or as a, either one of them, as far as I know. Um, although Jeremy Dyson did write uh, what this movie is adapted from, which is a stage play, which is kind of interesting. I kind of fascinated by what that would be because if they like actually integrated illusions into that stage production like actually had somebody rip through some paper at some point. <laughs> like I think that'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> I would That's actually great. much rather watch that than, than this movie almost. But, um, I, I don't know that that's the case, but it sounds like a fun way of approaching it. Um, the title of this film was misspelled as ghost stories. That's S T O R E I S in much of the pre-release media. This was done to accord with the production tagline. The brain sees what it wants to see, which I think is kind of fun. Okay. That's fun. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then the last twist. thing I have, <laughs> the last thing they have is the nine numbers hidden in the tunnel at the end of the film appear throughout the film, beginning with the numbers on the cells at the insane, women's insane asylum, which I had, I, I don't even remember what those numbers were. If they're not four, eight, 15, 23, 42, <laughs> then I, don't care. I forgot 16. Sorry, 16. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, that's, of most interest that I found. There's not a whole lot just yet. It's a newer movie. So I think there's going to be a lot, like there's a lot you could talk about in terms of connections to the ending. Like there's a little dog, like there's a lot of little girls wearing bright yellow dresses. Uh, one's a ghost, one's a toy one, you know, there's, um, mention of what is that disease that he has? A lock locked in, locked, locked in, in, locked in disease in. or whatever. That's mentioned by the barfly character yeah, in the his, first story. Yeah, his wa- his daughter has it, and it plays into the story. And then it turns out that so does um, Goodman's father has it, like things like that. You also at the like right towards the very beginning, you see Goodman looking out at the beach uh, or looking out at a beach, and there's the bullies from his memories playing with a dead bird, yeah. and that dead bird is also found throughout the movie. Like you could look at a lot of those things, but I don't have a good catalog of that just yet. As far as I've seen, there isn't one. Um, but aside from that terms of production notes not a ton cool yeah did you guys notice the uh the night watchman from the first story he would punctuate his sentences with the word sunbeam no no you didn't notice that at all uh uh-uh. yeah he would not just really no he, he would just be like hey what's up i have a good day yeah, sunbeam he just fucking <laughs> said no, sunbeam i did all notice the time. that man loves white bread it, it like the first time like I heard him say it I was like what and then I he kept saying it <laughs> that's kept really saying funny it. it would it's just like a period he used it as a period I was like why that's so weird and then he came in at the end and said it again when he was like setting up the mirror for the guy he's like hey that's, go, oh, that's what he's calling him I noticed it at the end yeah. but I thought that was just like his nick for the guy maybe that's why maybe huh. that's the reason but also he's he calls uh, Goodman Kojak and like the first yeah. when they first meet. Which turns out to be the ridiculing name that the bullies call um, the deceased uh, disabled boy. Yeah. Yeah. So at the interplay, there's a lot of interplay there, which I appreciate. It just, if 
if each individual part held up as strongly as the whole for me, it would it would be better. Tell me more about your whole. It's incomplete. Cool. Take uh, from that what you will. Uh, is that it for the the trivia? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap up with some news here. Extra, extra, read all about it. All right, guys, we got some news. Uh, so the Conjuring Three is happening, of course, because the nun made buku bucks. Uh, oh, yeah, and lots of enemies. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, James Wan's not going to be directing it, so it's probably going to be Dudu Brown. Mm. Uh, time to time to abandon ship on this one. You know, they had like two and a half good movies. So I hope some, some would argue less, but <laughs> it's, it's the Conjuring uh, finished. The Conjuring Three is going to open up with like Lorraine Warren disappearing into a puff of smoke, like Spider Man and all the other people, and it's going like, fucking Guardians of the Galaxy are going to come in and start seeing ghosts, and then <laughs> Warren's going to come save them, and Stephen Strange will be there. It's just going to be crazy. Weren't they supposed to do like a werewolf? Like they yeah, just there's that talks about one? that. I, I I don't know well, what the plot's right. gonna be. I don't I don't think they know uh, most likely. Uh, but I, uh, I think they have plumped just... every Warren story that is of note already, haven't yeah. they? Like their their big one was whatever that house in in London, and which they did in Conjuring Two uh, and, and well, Ghost. And I think their runner up for their best story. Oh yeah, well yeah. wasn't that the first movie was basically Amityville? No, oh, no, yeah. the second oh, movie show, starts with Amityville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the second one. Uh, but the, and then the, like uh, the the pup or whatever the fucking thing uh, is. Annabelle, Annabelle also yeah. is there thing like I think all of their good the whole the whole Are You Afraid of the Dark library of Warren stories <laughs> is kind of on display already. Yeah. They have to come up with something original, which has not worked out well for them so far, the nun. I mean, the thing is, is they've cranked these bitches. I mean, it's like any other series. It's like what series number seven is, you know, of quality. So the only thing with this is, is it's got like big budgets behind it. So they're just like Hollywood shitty sequels. Like, I, you know, they're just more plain. They're not even like on the cheesy or like kooky side. They're just boring. They're just I like, can't. I don't know. If they make Valak takes Manhattan, I will watch. The fuck <laughs> that. I Me would too, love that. dude. Uh, dude, your they slack went goofy with on it? dude, your jokes on the slack about the uh, what was it? They're they're redoing the Nun, and it's gonna be like Whoopi Goldberg. What's that movie? Yeah. <laughs> Sister uh, Act. Three. Sister Act. This, yeah, Sister Act 3 fucking Valak takes Manhattan or some shit. That shit was cracking me up. Oh my god, <laughs> I loved it. Fucking do like Valet goes to Rock City. This, but yeah, the Conjuring Three is going to be directed by a dude by the name of Michael Chavez. I don't really know what he's. I think he's done some TV work. So you, we're going to get. So well, the Nun made 133 million worldwide so far, which is buku bucks. They're going to make another Annabelle movie, which is not surprising. They're making the fucking Crooked Man movie. Which we've oh talked about God, before. I always forget. The thing is, with every one, spinoff, there's guaranteed to be two sequels. Guaranteed. Like, which yeah. one? another Annabelle movie? Why are they doing that? Why, uh, none of none of this needs. Conjuring three, like if they're like, oh, it's gonna be like a trilogy or something, like, oh, maybe that could be justified. Crooked Man is horseshit. Annabelle three, horseshit. None, <laughs> none of this. Not none. like what do they have to gonna, see how the Annabelle because, series because the how are they gonna tie up Annabelle, all those loose ends? Well, the second Annabelle was a prequel. So like where what they can't go back anymore. Are it's they gonna, going and it's People stuck in a. It's stuck in the Warrens' like house now. Where like where is it going now? It's gonna wind up on Lost Island, and Jack's gonna find it, and then yeah, it, it, oh. Lost had the same problem. They did flashbacks, they did flash forwards, flash and then they had forward, flash, flash sideways. sideways. They had alternate dimension flash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how excited are you guys about the Aubrey Plaza Child's Play movie that's happening? I didn't that? realize that she was in it. She, yeah, she's gonna be the bomb. Oh, she's playing mom roles already. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> she's hit that. It's we've gotten to the point where Aubrey Plaza is playing mom roles. Fuck. 
we're getting old. Fucking A. We're going to have a little like <laughs> robot Chucky, a little demon robot Chucky. It's not even going to be like a serial oh, killer. It's like a ro- uh-huh. Yeah. It's uh, oh, some, some like. It's not going to be. It's, it's like the crusty doll. It's like you got to change the setting to, to love instead of hate. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. It's not I Charles it's Lee Ray. Easy. No, no, yeah, there's <laughs> not. Brad Dourif? There's no, no Brad Dourif involvement at all. Uh, no Charles Lee Ray. It's just going to be like, as far as I understand, there's no serial killer like twist at all. It's just this dude working at a toy factory who like programs this one doll to be evil and, and it kills people, I guess. And there's Aubrey Plaza. Oh, it's like his, a- maybe if he's a serial killer and it's like his AI maybe. serial killer, <laughs> but no, it sounds dumb. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm trying to make it sound cool. With some. It's, it's, I was, pr- yeah. I've been pretty hard on the, ch- on the child's play series as of late anyway, but I really doubt that the answer is to take Brad Dourif out of the equation. I don't think that's the right way to go. Well, they're still take making, fucking- like movies Tilly with Dourif, like like the original series is still going, and that's still going to involve. So this is just. The, so this is a what if. This is a. This <laughs> is the amazing Spider Man. This is isn't Spider Man. It's the amazing Spider Man. This isn't X Men. This is the uncanny X Men. Yeah, and this they're is, just going to be this happening. This is the Venom film. Of they're just going to be series. happening at the yeah. same time. <laughs> yeah, and maybe cool. I heard even that a TV Venom, show. I heard that Ooh, Venom movie it. is dog shit. Is which, it? was easily predictable in my opinion but yeah, i just yeah, yeah. i just i loved venom growing up and Me too, i man. feel ta- I feel kid. like i feel targeted by this movie like in a very direct way i feel like i am the demographic <laughs> of this movie and the fact that i can see through its horseshit and not feel nostalgia enough to want to see this movie at all is pretty telling about how yeah I usually see like most oh. every superhero movie, like almost every single one, just because I like to go to the movies. It used to and be I rare. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna do this. I think this might be the first one where I'm just like, nah, bro. Oh, like, really? <laughs> I fuck yeah! Yet. I haven't watched Spider Man since Spider Man Three. Haven't? Well, no, I saw Homecoming eventually, but uh, I never watched any of the Amazings. Uh, see, I watched all that I've seen. Like, oh, I think like every fucking one, dude. It's I didn't see that like bullshit Fantastic Four movie until yeah, I, I didn't see any of the fan. No, well, I didn't see the that Fantastic Four. Terrible. There's a lot of them. Hey, movie is like hardly when, a movie at all. Remember when we were talking about horror news? Do you remember that? Nah. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, is this? Are we recording still? Yes. Are you fucking serious? The last thing we got to talk about. <laughs> curious. <laughs> fucking with him. The last thing we got to talk about. We watched a trailer for. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina that's going to be hitting Netflix mid-month. Um, full trailer, finally. How do you guys feel about this shit? Good. All right, let, let me say, I I was really excited because I'm like, I'm digging this aesthetic. Like, I'm digging, like, the look of it and, like the like, the story that they're playing with. Here is one big, big red flag for me, which I didn't realize from the last trailer, and I didn't, like, research her or whatever. The girl who's playing Sabrina, she is not, in my opinion, a good actress. In fact, <laughs> I think she's a pretty bad actress from the and I've and the reason I say that is because I've kind of there's been a lot of things I like I've kind of like fall like uh, we watched Mad Men and followed that series and she is a like an actual little girl in that movie. You kind of see her grow up and um like in that movie. And then she's like in Kimmy Schmidt and stuff. And she has a very, very limited acting range. And I think it's because like <laughs> she she started in Mad Men like so young, like literally like a very young little girl and kind of came up in that and has kind of been like going off of that. Like she was kind of already just in the business and she's kind of got this like specific kind of look. But I don't think she really developed like she's not. She was already in the business because she was a little girl. I don't think she's really developed into an actress. And I think she is a very bad actress from, from what I've seen. Yeah. And and even there were some of her little like ticks that I see like she's so limited in her range. And even in the trailer, once I realized it was her, I was like, oh, God, I, c- I could already see them. And I was like, shit, she might ruin this series. <laughs> Because otherwise, I was really excited about it, and then I was like, "Oh fuck!" I haven't seen mm. Mad Men at all, so I, I don't know. I don't have anything to compare yeah. this to. But I, as far as the aesthetic go, I think it. I think it looks pretty cool, pretty interesting. It relatively spooky. The only thing I, 
I hope they don't go like two CW with it. I'm, I'm getting like a little bit of that vibe from this second bit, yeah. trailer, and a little bit would be fine. But if they shied too far away from like the the actual like witchcraft, like you know, devil blood and guts stuff, then I might I might tap out on it. But um, yeah. I don't know. I feel I still feel pretty hopeful about it. I don't know this actress really, but I mean. <laughs> yeah. From what I saw thing. on the trailer, I like the the aesthetic for sure looks great. And I, it seems like to me they're definitely not shying away from any of the witchcraft stuff. In fact, they're leaning more heavily into it than I actually would have anticipated, especially considering that it's sort of it's a teen drama which puts it in the realm of CW shows. But those kind of shows have been steadily improving in reputation at least. Like Riverdale is supposed to be fucking good. Like it's supposed to be fucking good and this is based in the same or the it's sourced from the same well of uh jughead comics or whatever whatever that fucking comic company's called um yeah. and it's i don't know i'm i'm intrigued by it a lot i think it could be fucking fun and the thing is i don't think it's going to take itself seriously enough to where we should take it crazy serious either it seems like the tone is right on the edge of being serious but still kind of like buffy the vampire slayer at heart which i'm yeah, okay yeah. with yeah. yeah, if it was like Buffy, and I get that, kind of that feel a little bit too, which is exciting, but at the same time, I got a little bit of a Twilight, like CW kind of feel too, and I was like, oh. If it goes Twilight style, but then yeah, I'll be pretty perturbed by that. The, but the girl like, is was really where I was like, uh-oh, because she's uh, Kimmy Schmidt's sister. You guys probably, I think you guys all seen Kimmy I've seen Schmidt. a little bit of it. She, no. She's yeah. like, oh, really? Okay, well, she's in that too, and she just plays it way over the top. Like, she has no range. Like, if she's asked to do something, like, it's just very stale. And, like, to make her the main character, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, she's, she's in the uh, whole series? Cause yeah, she's Kimmy Schmidt's sister. I mean, she's, like, plays, like, a bit part, like, so, like... Yeah, she's uh, only in, like, one episode, it looks like. And they bring her back the several times. Yeah, they, like, well, she's also yeah. in Legend of Korra. Which I've never seen, but you guys, I think it's I've good. I've seen, yeah, Legend of Korra is dope, yeah. but they, it's animated, so yeah, yeah, just her voice. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to check it out, and if you know, if she released that pad, then I mean that sucks, but I'll give her. I gotta give her a chance. I've never seen her myself. True. Well, that's gonna do it for us for the news. Uh, we're gonna be back next week with a brand new episode. We're gonna be talking about Hocus Pocus. It is officially spooky season. We're in the okay. thick of it. Get yourself some candy corn. Put your costume on. Settle in. Watch Hocus <laughs> Pocus. Sit, sit around in your costume <laughs> and your candy corn. Do oh, our yeah. 31 days of Halloween. Every day you should be dressing up at the end of the, your work day <laughs> in your costume. Candy corn in hand. Checking out straight chilling movie recommendation. Let's see. what's. Uh, I can't reveal what today is. I'll post it. It's oh, boo. No, I'm it's, a it's Halloween. It's your Thursday. I already posted the Thursday one. <laughs> Right. I'm on a weird time time shift. So. Right. Friday. Friday I'll get a new one. Uh, check us up on a YouTube Straight Chilling Podcast. Movie recommendation. You can look at our yabos. Our yabos. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A. Hocus Pocus. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for us. Um, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Your ratings and reviews help people find us that don't know we exist. And we greatly appreciate that. And we need it. We need it. Help us out. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Straight Chilling Podcast. We're on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling. You can send us an email through our website, straightchillingpodcast.com. And until next week, as always, everybody, please keep chilling. Yabos. Yeah,